I want to welcome you all to our July Goshen College Presidential Town Hall for current and incoming students, as well as for parents and guardians. And we are so thankful for each of you today who have taken time to join us for this important session as we work together to prepare for this fall, which is just about here. Now, I'm going to invite my, uh, my panelists uh, to join me. Um, if I can get their videos on, yeah, there they are, from different locations, uh, some here on campus and uh, some at home. And just a quick introductions. Um, I want to, I'm Jody Byler and I'm Vice President for Communications and People Strategy and I will be moderating today's town hall. And I'm grateful to have with me uh, President Rebecca Stolzfus. You wanna wave, make sure everybody knows, knows who you are. Um, we also have Dominique Bergener Johnson, who's our Vice President for Marketing and Enrollment. And we have Hilberto Perez Jr. who's our Vice President for Student Life and our Dean of Students and Ann Vengerly, uh, our Vice President for Academic Affairs and our Dean of Academics. And I would just say we re have received a great group of questions already ahead of time from some of you, and so thank you. Uh, we will start with those in a bit, but we also invite you now, um, if you have questions, to submit them using the Q&A feature um, that we can answer those later. Um, so anything you've been wondering about, things that you hear and want to ask further about, please do. We'll try to get to as many of them as possible, uh, but if we miss them, uh, we will find ways to respond after today. And, um, and also just to note that we're recording today's session. So if you want to go back and watch it, or if for those who couldn't join us, uh, this will be available. Before we answer questions, though, I'd like to give um, each of our, our presenters a, a time to uh, talk a bit and give some updates from their areas. Um, so why don't we start uh, with you, President Stolzfus. Welcome. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the world, or maybe there's some good evenings out there too. Um, so glad that we can connect with you in this way. Um, we are so looking forward to having students on campus again and the start of the fall semester. We are eager to see again the students who we know and to learn to know our new students. And welcome also to parents. I'm um, a parent of young adults and until very recently, a parent of, of Goshen College students and um so i i um your seat is really familiar to me from a parent's perspective we are um, planning to implement an on-campus flexible academic model this fall you've heard some about that and ann um, dr vendrily our academic dean will be speaking with you more about that and answering the many questions that I'm sure that you have. I wanna take a moment to say a special welcome to our international students and their families. Um, international students matter so much to Goshen College. We've always had a vibrant international student community and you contribute so much to, um, to our campus and to our learning environment. And we are aware that um, our, Immigration um, has thrown up some roadblocks for your participation in Goshen College. And um, we just wanna say that we uh, lament some of the decisions that have recently been made about your access to Goshen College and, and learning and living in the United States. And we are actively um, just two days ago wrote to my senators and legislators um, asking them to rescind that decision. There are a number of lawsuits um, questioning the legality of that decision. So that's an unfolding thing. But in the midst of this, I just want you to know what a warm welcome you have at Goshen College. We are actively working um, to the best of our abilities to bring you here if that is possible. And we will work to support you once you are here. 
Dr. Dan Koop Lichty is the um, person on our staff and faculty who specifically supports international students. And, and I encourage you, he's um, out of the office this week, but do be in touch with him as you have questions or, or with any of us. The next thing I wanted to do was introduce you to our new pandemic task force. And we met um, just this morning and I want you to know the, the, um, the membership of that. So that is being led by um, Dr. Gilberto Perez, who, is, who will be speaking to you um, a little bit later in this webinar. Um, Kevin Miller, who is um, a nurse and an MPH, he, his regular job is as a major gift officer in our advancement team. He also happens to be my husband. He's a very good nurse and a very good um, public health researcher and um, communicator. He is leading our campus contact tracing efforts and is working with Gilberto as the coordinator of the task force. Myself, um, Jody Byler, who you have met, Dr. Beth Berkey, Associate Academic Dean, Cynthia Good Kaufman, our Interim Director of Facilities and Director of Events, and then four students have stepped up to be part of this this year as well. Wes Beck, Eden George, Ronit Goswami, and Katja Norton. So these, this group will be monitoring the situation um, and communicating and making decisions and making judgments as, as we move along. And just to say that we are listening very carefully to our student members and we'll be listening to all of our students um, as we move into the fall semester and through that. Here's a picture of us at our meeting this morning. We were um, missing Eden and Katya, but the rest of us are, are here. Um, if you were on our earlier webinar, you have seen this, but I just wanted to go over this again. This is our, the guiding framework that we are using um, to manage the situation with COVID-19 and the pandemic as we move into this fall. I'll just talk you through this briefly. So at the top level of this framework are our goals for the semester. First and foremost, the well-being of all of us in, in all of our dimensions, including um, to the best of our abilities, protecting us from transmission of the novel coronavirus. We want to fulfill our mission of educational excellence, real world learning, and active love for God and neighbor. We want to do these things with integrity and consistency and honesty, and we promise to communicate often and clearly to you about what's happening and um, any changes that we need to make and what the plans are going forward. Fundamental to what we do this fall will be to work together to create a culture that supports our well being and our educational mission this year. And some of the things that we want to highlight as part of Goshen College's culture this year in this special situation are that we will lead with kindness and we will encourage one another with kindness to um, follow all the new practices that will be required of us. Um, this is really a situation where we must all commit to the common good. We are in this together. My health depends on your health. Your health depends on each other's health. Um, we must work together to preserve our, um, our common goals as a campus community. And that requires a lot of trust. I need to be able to trust that you're honest with us, your classmates, your faculty, in terms of your behaviors, I, I need to trust that you are going to um, take on the commitments that we make together as a campus. And you need to trust each other and your faculty, your classmates, your roommates, your friends. And this is a tremendous opportunity for us to learn in a radically um, new situation for us um, all, none of us have, it is a novel coronavirus. It's a novel situation. And we've learned so much since January when we began to get news of um, this coronavirus until now. And we will continue our learning through the fall and putting that, um, that learning into action. So our primary um, commitments 
our first line of commitments are around prevention. And those fall into some personal responsibilities that each of us, employees and students, must take and some operational responsibilities that fall to Goshen College. The personal responsibilities that each of us must take to um, as we enter this fall semester are good old hand washing. We're going to try to make that as accessible as possible to you with hand sanitizer, but just be reminded that good old soap and water is um, just as effective. And now is a time to um, embrace hand washing. It'll keep you protected against all kinds of germs, not only the coronavirus. So hand washing remains important. Physical distancing, and we're using the guideline of six, six feet, um, sometimes three to four to six feet, but, but basically get that six foot measure in your mind. And we commit to wearing masks or face coverings. So I have my masks here. I've not gotten my Goshen College mask. You're gonna get a Goshen College mask, but this is one that I like if I'm in the mood for white. And I hope that you wear, I hope that you've been experimenting with masks and wearing different ones. This is probably the most comfortable one that I have, but it has to be tied behind my head and that's a lot of rigmarole to get it on and off. So anyway, we have been experimenting with lots of masks and we have chosen several um, that you can choose from when you come to find the one that works for you. Some of our faculty will be teaching in face shields um, instead of only masks. And um, that part of this is personal, personal preference. We have to take the masks seriously. Um, this is one of the strongest tools in our toolbox um, against the virus alongside physical distancing. And the evidence for masks is now um, really quite overwhelmingly positive. And that even wearing cloth masks, homemade masks, or, or manufactured masks can decrease the transmission of the virus amongst us by estimates of 30 to 50 percent. That's really important. Masks are, will, will be required on campus. And then we also are going to ask each of us to just pay close attention to our own health. And if you have symptoms, if any of us develop symptoms that might indicate that we have COVID-19, then we're going to ask um, us, any of us, to isolate ourselves and as quickly as possible to be tested for COVID. Um, and that leads us to what happens if COVID occurs. So if symptoms occur in any one of us, as quickly as possible, get a test and we'll provide some medical guidelines around getting testing. Um, if the test is positive, that person needs to isolate and will, if you're a residential student, you'll move into Kenwood House, which will be reserved for people who are ill with COVID and we will take good care of you there. Um, and we will immediately begin tracing your contacts. And again, Kevin Miller, who's on the pandemic task force, um, is leading our contact tracing effort. We have three, four people now trained um, and certified as contact tracers. And so they will be in touch with you to, to learn whether any other people need to be quarantined um, because of their exposure to you. And then we will quarantine those, um, those people. A bit about testing. Um, so Elkhart County has uh, quite a lot of testing sites, is doing quite a lot of testing. And I'm pleased to say that one of the testing sites is right on our campus and that will continue into the fall. It is a free walk-up testing site and um, it is using a rapid test, which I'm really pleased about because you can learn your result in less than 30 minutes. And so you know immediately where you stand and whether you need to go into isolation and whether your contacts need to be, need to be quarantined. So that's very good news in terms of testing on our campus. We, um, the situation with the pandemic has been very fluid. And so we must be honest with you that we will be prepared to pivot if the situation takes a radical turn for the worst. And we're look, we will be looking um, and speaking with local and state authorities about any conditions that would cause us to um, shelter in place and go fully online. 
we are not welcoming you um, in August to a fully online experience. It will be a hybrid experience and Anne will talk more with you about that, a flexible learning experience. But just to say that, that there is that possible eventuality that for a period of time, we will need to shelter in place and go online. Um, by compressing the semester so that we end by Thanksgiving, it reduces our chances of having to do that. Um, just one more thing about testing. We are not choosing to do mass testing or routine surveillance testing of our campus population through the semester. And that is based on the explicit advice of the Indiana State Department of Health and our chief um, medical officer in the state. And it is also consistent with the current CDC guidance for schools and institutions of higher education. So I know that some institutions are doing that, but we are choosing not to do that. And that's based on um, state and federal guidance and um, advice of health authorities. So with that, I will turn it over to Hilberto. Thank you, President Stalsus. Yes, let's hear from you, Hilberto, next about uh, student life and, and related areas. Thank you, uh, Jody, and thank you, President Stolzus. It is good uh, to be with you all again. We were together uh, several weeks ago where we offered a, a short presentation in terms of, of the status of where we are, uh, where we were as an institution at that time. So it's really good to be back to talk to you and to share with you a little bit about how things are developing. And I think one of the questions that I as the Vice President of Student Life and also Chair of this uh, Pandemic Task Force have been thinking about uh, quite a lot, is well, how do we enter this new reality here at GC this fall? And, and what does that mean for us as we come to this beautiful campus right now that uh, it's, it's shady and, and it's, uh, it's, it's looking nice. Uh, Fizz plant workers are just doing a fantastic job of preparing the facilities and so forth. And I think the, the one answer that I've been coming to repeatedly is this notion of confronting it. And so we just need to confront our reality. And, uh, but we don't confront that reality alone. We confront that reality together. And that feels uh, good for me as, as leading the task force that, that I'm working with a group of people. And uh, those people encompass, as you saw, students. And for me, students mean a great deal to the livelihood of this institution. And if we don't hear from them, if we don't engage them, if we don't have their feedback, then it makes uh, things uh, not as well for us. And so just want to let you know that we've been meeting with students uh, as soon as last week. Um, we'll meet with the Pandemic Task Force students this evening. Uh, there's another meeting coming in the next couple of days. And um, how will we do this work? And I think what we're really saying as we think about how we are developing is just really with an openness to do things better and to do things truthfully and as President Stolzus do things in kindness and with care. And I think uh, our commitment to making this work uh, succeed uh, really will take uh, uh, an uncommon courage. So we have common good and we have uncommonly great people in this city, but I think we need uncommon courage at this point right now to enter this particular space. And that means that you and us and all of us will require us to think of the other person not just uh, ourselves. And so I'd like to give you an update on some of the things that have been happening here on campus in regards to residents' life, student involvement, um, where do we quarantine, as President Stolzfus talked a little bit about that. But we think that uh, the residents' life is a, is a key important component to us being together here on campus. And so one of the things that we are strongly encouraging uh, individuals who are coming to live in our residential space is that roommates need to have a discussion about what measures are acceptable within their rooms and you know prior to coming to campus so you have an idea about how you're going to interact. We are working very hard right now uh, to place uh, preventative measures within the residence halls in terms of uh, in bathrooms. I know uh, that is a big concern and so we have looked at that and we are working to uh, organize the sinks and ensure physical distancing there. We're also working with our resident assistants uh, over the summer and then here this fall where 
they uh, will be doing creative programming, ensuring that uh, we meet those COVID-19 preventative measures. We're also uh, recognizing that uh, mental health is a significant part of the experience and uh, we will be training all of our RAs again this year in mental health first aid. And we hope that we can make these uh, spaces where we congregate, uh, whether connector, residence floor, floor lounges, commuter lounge, uh, and bathrooms where people will need to wear, as uh, President Stos was talked about, wear the masks. Um, when we think about personal and community responsibility, we hope that people will cooperate and will be patient with one another and that we will be flexible, making sure that we uh, are able to care for one another. In terms of quarantine and uh, isolation, if you can move that slide, uh, Adela. We uh, are looking at uh, a couple of things here. Number one, uh, we're really kind of asking all students and faculty and staff uh, that as you prepare to come to campus, uh, whether it's August 1st or August 14th, August 7th, that um, you sort of take some preventative measures even now. So if there are places where, if, if there are things that you can start doing now that would allow you to have less contact with people, uh, consider the types of activities that you're having, the numbers of people that you're gathering with. We, we are not saying that individuals need to quarantine before they come, but we're just sort of saying a, a, a sort of a, a, light, a light quarantine for yourself within your own home environment. The question has come is who's required to specifically quarantine and where might that be located and where do I get a COVID test? We've had a little bit of that information already, but what we are saying is that uh, our residents, residential students who are coming from an international setting will need to uh, quarantine for 14 days and that will mean uh, for us following that State Department um, directive. So therefore it didn't originate with us, but we are uh, working to follow that very closely. Uh, residential students will, will be identified through contact tracing and uh, as uh, President Stolz who said we will uh, make sure that we isolate or quarantine. The place where quarantine will happen is Miller 1 and Miller 2 and so therefore individuals who need to quarantine and isolate uh, will be in spaces where we will provide support uh, through our residence life coordinators and AVI which will provide the the food and virtual counseling appointments are also available for students to process sort of anything that's really going on in that time and so forth. Um, we also know that we need to work at uh, getting that test if you do have those symptoms and so as President Stolz who said we will move quickly to have students go to the testing center if those tickets are gone uh, we will make available transportation to get those students to another testing site across the county and which I've been very um, fortunate and very blessed uh, here in the county that we actually have quite a number of testing sites so uh, we can move students quite a bit. We will have a process very specifically for contact tracing and the Res Life Coordinator will be in touch with students to then contact with the contact tracing team and therefore move students to quarantine if that needs possible. One of the other things that's probably most important to all of us here on campus is how will we eat and how will we nourish ourselves here at the uh, college. We are very, very, I always repeat, very, very fortunate and blessed to have a wonderful partner in AVI. For parents who are coming this year for the first time and students who are coming for the first time, you're in for a treat. Uh, Jeremy Corson and his team do a fantastic job of ensuring that we have uh, sufficient food and uh, great tasting food and uh, can accommodate to many different uh, diets. Uh, with uh, dining services, we will make some very specific changes uh, and AVI will. There will be a 30 minute reservation to eat in person and you will have to uh, either uh, do that through the Get app or uh, when you come in person, you will be assigned to a specific section. The AVI staff will be serving all of the food. So we will as staff and employees and students will not have any contact with picking up food uh, and utensils and so forth. We also will have the option for a, to go green box where you ask for your food, you'll take that if you don't wanna eat in terms of you're feeling not comfortable eating in terms of the dining hall, you can take that and then when you come back for another meal, you bring back your green box and you'll get that filled up or you can eat there as well. There will only be about two to four people per table for physical distancing purposes and there 
There will be actual uh, plexiglass uh, hanging where you'll be in sections where people will know where to sit. Uh, there will be sections one through four. And when you come up to the cashier, which you'll learn when you come, you will be assigned to a specific section and you will be asked to sit in that section. There will be all types of floor markings. And so we hope that you don't look down, but that you're looking up, but you will be guided into uh, very specific places. And eating time will really uh, be a time to eat. Uh, there, we, we also, one of the things that we are lamenting at this point is uh, eating is a time to socialize and to gather. And we can still do that, but for 30 minutes, and then we will need to actually move on. And there will only be one entrance and one exit. So therefore you will enter through the main door at West Lawn and you will exit through the gardens, uh, the garden door, which leads out and those tables will also outside in the patio will be available for you and you'll be able to go. In terms of athletics, we are working very hard with uh, the NAIA and the Crossroads League to ensure that uh, we have uh, a, a safe environment for our student athletes. So there will be a number of things that we will be asking student athletes to do uh, in terms of pre-participation pre screening, where your athletic trainer will have to review uh, your information. Uh, that daily symptom screening will have to be uh, it was self-reported uh, in the online athletic strategic system before any type of activity that you do. And then if you have a negative test result, then uh, you, you will be able to participate. All student athletes will, have, will be required to take a uh, test uh, seven days prior to any competition and hopefully will uh, not have to quarantine or isolate and you will be able to compete. At this point, the NIA has not uh, established any guidelines specifically around spectators. So we all want to be showing our purple pride and we want to be at those games, but we also know that potentially at this time right now, it may not be possible at the beginning of the season until we get a little bit more uh, work on that. So there will be uh, some travel uh, that we're working with student athletes and, and taking those precautions as they go to different games and so forth. Uh, there will be face masks that will be available and I guess what they're called neck gaiters where you can actually kind of cover your face and then it covers your neck. So uh, we will do all types of physical distancing and uh, we appreciated the work that is happening in athletics at this point. The other section that we have, which is another place where all of us tend to go to, and I'll end with this, is our rec fitness center. We are working very hard to ensure that this space is safe for you and for community members. So therefore we are taking some specific measures to ensure that safety. All cardio machines that are available within the uh, rec fitness center will be spaced out and staggered to accommodate uh, physical distancing. And uh, all student athletes will follow instructions from their coaches regarding the space and where they can practice. Uh, we also know there's an academic department. And so the academic department in that building will also be working with its students to ensure that as they interact with the different equipment and so forth, that they will follow those uh, instructions the weight room, again, will be available, but it will have a limited number of people within the weight room uh, at a time. And we hope that uh, folks will follow those. We will, again, open up the RFC uh, Rec, Rec Fitness Center in October for uh, community members. We appreciate the relationship and partnership we have with community, and we hope that we can be in touch with them as soon as possible. I will be continuing to meet with students over the summer here as we prepare for them to arrive. And I look for, forward to more feedback and more engagement with them and with you. So if you want to send me an email or if you want to write to pandemic at goshen.edu for anything related to the pandi pandemic task force, we'd be happy to receive your questions. So I'll stop there and we'll pass it back to Jody. Thank you, Hilberto. And now we're going to hear from Dominique Berner Johnson. Uh, she has some information to share with us about financial aid and enrollment, some, especially related to some questions we had already received. Great. Yeah. So I will just touch very briefly on some questions you might have related um, to situations you know that might change in the coming year around your enrollment uh, uh, status and how that would impact your financial aid. Um, so one specific uh, scenario uh, or one group uh, I wanted to address with student athletes and how your aid may or may not change in the coming um, either fall or the coming year. 
Um, so one is around, you know, if fall sports were to get canceled right now, fall sports are still on as planned, but if for some reason in the next few weeks, there was a change there, either conference wide or institutionally, um, or if mid season, they needed to change. Um, we wanted to just confirm and reassure you all that your aid would not be impacted. So right now, if you are receiving athletic aid, that would not change, um, either this, you know, coming fall season or for the for, for the coming year. Um, then more broadly, we, we also completely recognize that there might be situations um, either right before classes begin or midway through the semester where you might need to take uh, a leave of absence or, or defer to a later start date. Um, so in those situations, um, you know, the process is slightly different depending on whether you're a new student or whether you're a current student. Um, if you are a new student and need to defer to a, a later start date, uh, you have two options for, for um, new start dates. So one would be the spring semester, which starts in January, and the other would be uh, next fall, which would start in August. Um, if you decided that you, you needed to do that, you would just contact your admissions counselor. For current students um, and, and new students after they start, who, who will then be current students. Uh, if you need to leave, you know, at any point after classes have started, you would just connect with your uh, academic advisor to talk through your options there. Um, so in terms of impacts on aid, if you decided to defer or withdraw, um, if you uh, defer to the spring, so this is for new students, if you just defer to start in January, there will be no changes to your aid whatsoever. Um, that would stay exactly the same. If you decided uh, to defer to next fall, so a, a year from now, um, your Goshen College uh, scholarships would stay exactly the same. So things that are related to merit aid, like your academic awards, um, you know, music awards, athletic awards, those kinds of things would generally stay exactly the same. Um, however, uh, once you get into next uh, fall, you do need to complete a new FAFSA. And so depending on any changes that, that might be reflected in your FAFSA, that might impact your overall financial, imp uh, financial aid package. So there, you might see some changes in need-based related aid. So just to be aware of that. Um, yeah, I think that's the basics. And yeah, we'll address a few more detailed questions around that later. Thank you, Dominique. Now, Dr. Vendrily, could we hear about academic plans from you? Sure, thank you. Welcome, I'm glad that all of you could join us for this event. And we've been working really hard to think about what we can do to make our classrooms safer, keep our faculty and staff safe. And so for returning students particularly, our classes are gonna look very different than what you saw before. We've gone through, um, dedicated team has gone through all of our classrooms and reconfigured and made plans to allow for about six feet of space around each student. So that means that the classrooms will have plenty of elbow room. Um, they'll also be limited to 30 students or less. So we will have small class sizes, which we normally have, but it'll be more focused now. And we've also called into um, operation a few spaces we wouldn't normally use as classrooms. For example, some of our um, recital halls and practice halls are very large spaces so we can spread students out in there and have some more teaching areas. Um, so we will still have that small class, get to know your classmates, get to know your faculty within the classroom like we always have, but it will look very different. Our faculty have worked all summer to really rethink their courses too and be able to deliver them in a very flexible way. Um, we've asked them to categorize the classes into four different categories so that you'll know a little better what to expect when you do sign up for a class. And those will be noted on the schedule and you'll be able to go into MyGC and find out for each of your individual classes what the mechanism and what the teaching style is going to be. And the four categories are these, face-to-face, -face, which is a very traditional, what we normally do, um, that course will meet in person, on campus. All of our courses are supported by Moodle, so there will be some online content. 
the face-to-face -face courses will be limited to a lot of our laboratories where there's special equipment and our practical experiences. Um, and there may be some limits on remote students being able to participate in those face-to-face -face classes. The bulk of our classes will be what we're calling hybrid. So there will be some synchronous attendance, meaning that you're gonna meet face-to-face -face either on campus during your normally scheduled time or alternating times. Um, you'll still have a lot of content in Moodle. You may have some pre-recorded lectures and resources to draw on there. Um, some of the larger classes may split up so that certain students meet on Tuesday with a professor and others meet on Thursday with a professor. But that hybrid model will be probably the most common one we use. Our third option is called remote, and that would include some face-to-face -face on Zoom, but not actually meeting on campus. So that, again, supported in Moodle, but using this kind of format like we have today, where you can see each other and converse um, electronically. And then our fourth type is online, which would be asynchronous, learn at your own pace, built much like the orientation courses built, like you may have experienced in traditional online. We don't have a lot of those courses, um, but that would be an option, and for people that are studying remotely, that one is the most flexible, probably. Um, so we will have an option for remote students. We're finalizing the application process right now, and it probably will be available early next week. Um, and that's just for students who can't attend the face-to-face -face classes. Um, we expect that for students that need to be in quarantine for a week or two, this would be an option. You'd fill out an application. We'd know that it's a temporary situation, that we could communicate with your faculty so that you know what you're supposed to do to keep up with your classes, and then you can rejoin the class seamlessly when you're ready. If you become ill and you need to be in isolation, you could still do this temporary remote learning as long as you feel up to it. Um, but that would help us provide services to you and support. In rare cases, students can request a full semester of remote learning um, just for fall 2020. Um, and that has to be related to a reason of COVID. Um, if you're unable to return to campus, for example, international borders are closed, or you are a caretaker of someone um, with COVID, or you have to supervise uh, children doing remote learning, there are a few reasons that that might be uh, a concern. So there'll be an application for that. Like I said, there may be some limits on your ability to take face-to-face -face classes then. You might have to take hybrid and remote classes in that situation. But We'll review that carefully, look at your schedule, work with an academic advisor to figure out the best situation for you. So if you're considering any of those remote options, um, I would encourage you to think through it very carefully, talk to an academic advisor about your particular program, because it is going to vary a lot depending on what your major is. Um, we are really looking forward to having all of you back on campus. Our faculty have been working really hard to get classes ready for all of you. We're very excited. We've got seven new faculty members that we're going to welcome and can't wait for you to meet all of them. So we're really doing our best to provide a safe learning environment that takes full advantage of the very dedicated faculty we have, the very small classes we have, and the very spacious campus that we have. Thanks. Thank you, Ann. All right, it is now time to respond to your questions directly. And um, thank you to all who submitted some ahead. And again, we have a number that have come in, um, but if you have questions now, uh, follow up to what you've heard or something that you didn't hear and you'd like to, please, please submit those. And we'll do our best to, to get to as many as we can. We have about uh, 15 minutes and um, that'll give us time to get through a lot here. So um, the first question, I'm gonna ask Gilberto, um, does the mask policy extend into dorm life? And would I be expected to wear it while I'm on my floor or in the restroom if I'm a residential student? Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, we are actually uh, asking students to, uh, within the dorm life, to uh, wear the mask, uh, their mask. Uh, we also know that we're asking students to make agreements with their roommate in terms of their, their own room, in terms of their family union. But as, as students are interacting potentially in the connector or in that floor lounge, we will ask them to, to wear the mask. Uh, if you are going to the restroom, uh, we are encouraging in individuals to wear their mask and uh, as they leave and uh, they can uh, put on their mask again for sure. So uh, hoping that that, uh, we know it, it, it's uh, complicated and uh, but we also want to ensure that uh, people remain safe. And so we will ex be expecting that uh, mask to be worn. Great, thank you. Now a question about um, our local area and um, what are the current statistics in Elkhart County and how, um, how is the data looking for, for our local region and how does that impact our planning? President Stolswitz, would you be willing to answer that? Oh. Yeah, there you are. Sure, I track these numbers really closely, so I can I can tell you that um, Elkhart County had a distinct surge in cases that that peaked about a month ago, and in the past month, um, our incidence rate, our rate of new cases, has um, decreased by about forty percent um, and stayed kind of steady. Since then, um, we are working, and actually Goshen College, a number of us are, are working closely with county health authorities um, on community education within Elkhart County to, to further um, decrease the incidence rate in, in Elkhart County. And so hopefully a month from now when most, uh, most of you arrive, that will be, that will be down further. But we have to recognize that nationally, um, states in general are, um, in, most states are having increasing cases. Um, so how is that affecting us? First of all, it brings a lot of testing resources to Elkhart County and a lot of education um, efforts, efforts going on. Um, but it is, it is true that we are, I would say, nationally, um, in sort of the middle range of where communities are in terms of, of um, incidence of COVID right now. I would, I, it's also really important to note that in Elkhart County, our hospitals, our hospital census numbers are fine. Um, we have plenty yeah, of beds, beds. Um, plenty of ICU beds and ventilators. So our health system is not, um, under stress, um, even with the numbers that we see now currently in the month of July. Thank you, President Stolzus. Uh, Dominique, a question for you. Uh, will there be changes in tuition or scholarships for international students who are unable to physically attend the college this year due to uh, whatever reasons? Sure. Um, so in response to the first part of the question around tuition, uh, tuition will, will remain the same for students who are unable to, to physically attend GC. And that's true for both international or domestic. Um, so if you needed to do the remote learning option that, that Anne mentioned, um, yeah, just wanted to confirm that tuition would remain the same. Um, for the second part about scholarships, uh, this would be similar to, to what I'd shared earlier. It would also apply for international students. Um, as long as you are able to be enrolled full time at Goshen College, you know, regardless of your your location, um, your financial aid package would would stay the same. Um, if you have, you know, questions about your specific situation of whether or not you are able to be enrolled full time, um, you know, we'd encourage you to, to either speak to your admissions counselor if you're a new incoming student or to speak to our international student advisor. Um, the other piece I'll also just uh, clarify because I didn't mention earlier, but um, so if you, you know, end up deferring or end up uh, taking a leave of absence um, and returning at a later date, um, your, finance, your scholarships from Goshen College would stay the same as long as you're not taking courses at another institution. 
Um, because at that point, um, if you were to, you know, take one or two classes online or at another institution while you're waiting to delay your start or return to Goshen College, at that point, you would be considered a transfer student. So, um, you know, all of your current academic or merit awards are based on your current academic record, like your high school record or, or where your college record currently is. So just to also be aware that um, the one thing that could, could change even on the merit award side, if you if you decide to come back at a later date, as if you were to to take courses in between your return to Goshen. Thank you, Dominique. Um, and there's a question around uh, the music program and what does that look like um, this fall, um, in, as, whether in person or online or what does what does music at Goshen College look like? Well, our music faculty have been planning um, pretty extensively. So I'll run through some of the different groups. Orchestra is planning to rehearse strings only in person with six feet of spacing and masks. And wind and brass players will be organized into chamber ensembles and rehearse on their own or virtually. Choirs are gonna rehearse online and probably record themselves and do a little bit of editing to make that meld into something good. Lavender Jazz Band is going to work a lot on individual jazz improv um, and again recording some individual things and putting those together. Steel Band is a newer group and they're going to be able to go right at it. They can do their thing six feet apart quite easily and so um, they're ready to go. Private lessons will continue as usual. Um, piano and strings will be in person, others will be virtual, and they're planning to set up four practice rooms for those private lessons that are dedicated to private lessons so that students have access to what they need to do that. And uh, we'll probably continue with recitals um, in a virtual streaming kind of environment. But music will go on. It will look different, um, but they do have some pretty uh, concrete plans about how music students can continue their work. Thank you. Hilberto, uh, a student life question, um, or a travel question, I should say. Are there restrictions for students in terms of traveling off campus or out of town? And similarly, are there restrictions around visitors um, to campus from off campus and out of town? We at this point are not uh, requiring students who travel from the West Coast or the East Coast or even Puerto Rico to quarantine when they arrive on campus. And we are currently working on a uh, sort of a level for a visitors and guest guide and our student uh, members on the pandemic task force are contributing to that. So if students actually have questions, they, they can contact Ronit, Katya, Wes, and um, Eden to sort of talk through that. But at this point, um, we are not quite there yet in terms of the decision of well, how guests from outside of campus can come onto the res floors. And also, um, if you live in different you know, spaces, will you be able to enter into another, into another space? So that should be coming shortly with even just meeting tonight with students and we'll be able to inform the campus community a little bit later. Thank you. Uh, a question here, um, has GC considered building temporary or permanent outdoor classrooms that might be used this fall? Uh, Anne? Well, we did consider it. It was something that faculty raised as a possibility in the spring and um, certainly considered it, but then realized that we don't have really great Wi-Fi signals all, all our outdoor spaces. So that might limit some of the technology that we're used to using in class. And that as the weather starts to change and things get a little colder, it might lose its appeal to be outside every day. So, um, there probably will be classes that go outside on and off at the faculty members um, guidance. We do that sometimes anyway. Um, but as far as scheduling particular courses for an outdoor venue, I, we're not going to do that here. 
Mary Lee does that pretty often. If you want to go do something out at Mary Lee, they um, have a whole fall that's mostly outdoors. But here on campus, we probably are not going to go that way. All right. Actually, a few, another question for you, Anne. Um, this is about both uh, nursing student clinicals um, and also about is there, if there are any developments about how nursing clinicals will happen. And similarly, um, internship requirements. Are there um, alternatives to that if it's not possible to find um, an internship at this time under these circumstances? Oh, we need to unmute you, Anne. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so nursing internships, we've certainly been working on a lot, and we've been talking with our partners here at Beacon Health and Elkhart and Goshen Health here in town, um, and made some arrangements to be sure that our students are not going to be assigned to COVID positive patients, um, but to do their kind of more typical nursing rotations there. We're also supplementing with um, simulations. And we did some of that last year. We always do a little bit of that. And so that will fulfill part of the requirements there. Other internships, it will depend on the discipline and um, if the host agency is open and ready to take students. We know, for example, that our student teachers are still gonna be engaged, even though our school systems will probably be doing different things. Our student teachers will do what our what teachers are doing, whether that's remote teaching or in person. Um, so we'll make adaptations depending on the discipline and try and meet the needs uh, for those internships. And faculty will work with students to help figure that out. All right, thank you, Anne. Um, I'm going to turn this question to President Stolzfus, a question of can we just go completely online? So why, why not just go completely online? Because I, um, I think it is the view of our faculty and our students and our coaches and our staff that we can create meaningful community learning experiences and be um, educators with and for each other even in these circumstances in a way that is qualitatively better and more rewarding than being fully online. And so we, um, at Goshen College, being in relationship with one another and learning from one another and creating learning on campus is a large part of what we do. And um, we feel that the benefits of that um, are really compelling to us. And so we have, as you can tell, um, put together many plans and, and opportunities for that kind of learning on campus. Thank you, President Stolzfus. Um, Hilberta, one final question for you, and then I think we're going to need to, to wrap up here. Um, this is a question around how will we discourage off-campus partying? Am I on? You are on. So how will we discourage off-campus partying? Well, I didn't know that actually happened. So, um, wow, that's great, interesting. No, I think that um, part of what we will do is to work with students to think about their choices as we always do. But I think we'll ramp that up specifically this year with our campus counselors and with our partnership with Oaklawn and just helping us, helping our students remember uh, the more we expose ourselves to certain situations where we are in close contact and we may potentially lose inhibitions of what we're doing, uh, all those situations creates um, opportunities for uh, potential exposure at a higher level. So um, we hope and we always do that our students make uh, good choices when they leave campus. And we also know they're making good choices when they're on campus. And we hope that our students are responsible and uh, take care of not just themselves, but the other person who they are with uh, potentially at that party. 
and uh, that they might think of those who they're coming to contact with in the school settings, if they're doing internships, uh, if they're going into clinicals, if they're going into other spaces. Uh, so we hope that they uh, think of the other person and have the courage to be responsible. Thank you. I am going to to call this part to a close. There are a few questions that we didn't quite get to this, this afternoon. Um, we will follow up with uh, communication with the link to the video if you'd like to watch again, um, as well as, as responses to any questions we didn't get to. Um, so there will be more information coming. Um, but I wanted to offer President Stolzfus an opportunity to just give us some closing comments uh, before uh, final, final announcements. Just to say again that we are motivated and um, fully committed to your safety and your excellent education. And we feel that, that what we have um, planned is, is the best balance of safety and excellence and, and, um, and richness of the educational experience that we offer. Um, as Hilberto said, this is a time for uncommon courage, but it is not courage in a, in a, in a um, in a way of, of disregarding the risks of the pandemic, but it's a courage of standing together in solidarity and caring for one another in the face of, of new risk and the possibility that we can, um, we can actually be creative in new ways, even in this context. Um, we're on sort of a historic adventure together, and I believe that we can do that well together as Goshen College. Um, I would not ask you or our faculty to do anything that I would not do or ask my um, young adult beloved ones to do. This will not be forever. This too will pass. It will change, and we can be part of that change for the better, um, and we We'll stay in touch with you and keep you fully informed as we continue to refine these plans and if any changes need to be made in them. Thank you, President Salsus. All right, as we go, I would like to just share, um, can I get the slide up of uh, the dates? So it is now mid-July and school starts in a month. And, and you are returning um, in just less than that. And uh, we can't wait to see you. And in between now and then, there will be more opportunities for communication and information sharing. Um, and I wanted to just share with you a couple of dates that are coming up um, that for from some specific student groups uh, for some more information and um, times to, to ask questions and um, interact. So just noting that there will be this weekend uh, or July 18th, there is the new student July virtual summer orientation at 7 p.m. And if you are needing to attend, um, please register for that if you didn't already attend. And then in uh, July 23rd, and uh, there will be a new residential student uh, session at 4 p.m. and on the July 27th at 4 uh, session for new commuter students. And you'll be getting um, direct invites uh, for those. Um, and then for our athletes, uh, our fall student athletes, tentatively there's a plan for an April, or excuse me, an August 3rd um, session at 4 p.m. and uh, an August 13th session for our winter and spring student athletes. Those are tentative. You'll be hearing more about those from your coaches and the athletic directors. Um, but note that these are times uh, on Eastern uh, Daylight Time. So we look forward to continuing to be in touch with you. Please reach out with your questions uh, directly. Pandemic at Goshen.edu is an email address I, we want you to become familiar with and to um, reach out to. And um, we will be following up with more um, information uh, out of this meeting um, in, the, in the coming days. Thank you, have a great afternoon and um, Blessings to you this day.